Alrighty, Josh Ruben from East West Healing and Performance. Before I get started today, I want to put it out there once again. We are taking YouTube clips to post on our page every Friday. So if you get great YouTube clips that are educational, that are just not some crazy exercise shit, that are educational, send them to JR East West Healing. I'll put my email down there, jreastwesthealing.com. Um, and we'll post YouTube clips from other, you know, from other people that are uh, subscribers to our page every Friday. The same time, we have a blog. It's joshrubin.wordpress.com, and you can get to it from our website as well. Our blog is over 600 posts. It gets over 500 visits a day. It's a great blog, but you know we've been doing it for five, six years. We want content from other people, so send in your content, your articles, your blurbs, your videos, your whatever you want to put on our blog. Obviously, it has to meet our expectations, but send it in to jreastwesthealing.com, and you know maybe once, twice, two, three times a week, whatever I feel is appropriate, we'll be posting the stuff on our blog every single week so you'll get the exposure. So don't forget. So what I want to talk about today is candida and the feeling of being drunk. Now I've done YouTube clips on candida. I think I did a candida four part series. You can check out the YouTube page. You can go to our uh, website to our articles to the holistic um, to the articles page. And if you go to the blog uh, or the YouTube clips, there's a bunch of stuff on candida in there. But what I want to talk about today is the feeling you get if you eat a carbohydrate meal and you feel drunk. Why is this happening? Why do people say that when you have a candida overgrowth, you have like a brewery going on in your gut and you're essentially t drunk all the time? And I've gone over this and emotionally too. If you go to our website and you go to the articles page and you go into that candida fungal section, you'll find I did something on the emotional side of candida as well. But why does this happen? Well, when we normally eat carbohydrates, our body actually takes glucose and breaks it down into lactic acid. This is called glycolysis. Once again, big words. I love big words. But when you have a candida overgrowth, and I've talked about this, we need candida. 45 to 65 percent of our GI tract is actually candida albicans. We need this to keep a nice, you know, ebb and flow of good to, I should say, aerobic to non-aerobic bacteria and fungi in our gut, so we can break down our foods on and on and on. Candida is actually a spore-forming um, fungus, and you can't kill it. It is impossible to kill. Just like Clostridia, C. difficile, you can't kill it. It's a, it's a spore-forming bacteria. The only thing you can do with candida is control it with enough good bacteria in the gut. Anytime you end up with dysbiosis and leaky gut syndrome, we've taken antibiotics. I've gone over this in my YouTube clips. You've got mercury in your body. There's a stress. You have a thyroid imbalance. On and on and on. You create the environment for candida to actually overgrow. Now, when it overgrows, it becomes a problem. 99% of the time, I'm telling this, 99% of the time I see people doing the diet. They're taking supplements. They've been doing it. They're taking antibiotics. They've been doing it for years. And they still can't keep the candida under wraps. Because 99% of the time, I'm telling you this, that most people have an overgrowth because of something else. Something else like a mercury toxicity, a parasite, dysbiosis, malabsorption issues, pH issues in the gut, not enough hydrochloric acid, liver insufficiencies, pancreatic insufficiencies, not enough bifidobacter in the large intestine, not enough um, lactobacillus in the small intestine, eating crappy foods, stressful life, you name it. There's something that's creating the environment for the candida to overgrow. So you're trying to control the candida when that's actually the branch of a root issue that you need to actually control, like getting rid of a parasite and then maybe try to control the candida. Or, you know, adjusting to all the stress in your life, then getting rid of the candida. So there's usually something else, but what happens is, when you have this overgrowth, when you eat carbohydrates, candida actually steals the glucose molecules, and it actually produces from that, you don't produce lactic acid, you actually start producing ethanol and acetaldehyde. Now, ethanol is like alcohol. And what happens with these two things is, after you eat a carbohydrate meal, you get that feeling of being drunk, per se, or really full, or sleepy. That's how you know, I'm not saying that's definitely a sign of a candida infection, but that's that feeling you get. And you see this in a lot of children who have trouble concentrating, who have ADHD, who are sleepy all the time, on and on and on, after eating their foods. That's a sign that you're overproducing this alco alcohol, this ethanol. Which is, you know, if you think about it from a um, digestive perspective, you're releasing these toxins all the time from the ethanol, right? Which overloads your immune system, which overloads your liver at the same time. Now, if you're actually... If you're a mother, per se, and you have candida in your gut, and you actually give birth to an infant, what else would you give birth to? But 
whether it's C-section or vaginal, if it's vaginal, a, 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 an infant is actually born with no good bacteria in its gut. And as you give a vaginal birth, the um, vaginal fluids, the baby actually ingests it, and you have tons of lactobacillus and other types of good bacteria, or you should, in your vagina. Um, so the baby actually, it gets its GI flora right away from the health of your vagina and the health of your GI tract. So watch your vagina and watch your GI tract because they're highly correlated. If it's a C-section, the baby gets it from breast milk. So this, this is huge because the health of the mother is so important to basically dictate the health of the child. Now, if you have a candida infection and you have a vaginal birth, well, you pass on that candida right away to the infant. And now the infant from the get-go, if you're feeding it soy formulas and formula, you're actually creating this um, candida overgrowth. And you'll see things like thrush. They'll get really colicky. They'll get cradle crap head. Um, they'll get skin rashes. They'll get a lot of gook in their nose and eyes and things like that. They'll have chronic uh, colds on and on and on. And you just perpetuate the dysfunction so as they get older, you know, they're more susceptible to diseases. Now, if you breastfeed them, it doesn't matter because now you're actually feeding them the toxic byproducts from your candida infection. You're actually overloading their GI system, decreasing hydrochloric acid. You're creating stomach hyperpermeability problems. You're overloading their liver and creating autoimmune or I should say immune system dysfunction, which can lead to diseases later on in life. So you can see how this one little thing can actually be compounded onto the infant and yourself. So the health of you dictates the health of your children. Children just don't get sick. Unfortunately, it's the health of yourself or the health of your mother, their mother, their mother, their mother, their mother, their mother, and on and on and on. So that's one of the things about candida albicans and ethanol. The other one is acetyl aldehyde. Now they've shown that acetyl aldehyde does a couple things. It actually attaches to most of the proteins in your body, and you are made up of proteins, your bones, your, your teeth, your nail. All these things are made up of proteins. Well, when acetaldehyde attaches to these proteins, you can't use your proteins how you're supposed to. So what happens is you end up with fatty acid deficiencies, neurotransmitter deficiencies, malabsorption or malnutrition deficiencies, and on and on and on. And at the same time, they've showed that you can end up with myelin, or your nerves are wrapped in a proteolipid bilayer called myelin. So you end up with myelin deficiencies, and they've shown that people that have issues with candida overgrowth typically have maybe central nervous system diseases or later on in life, MS and things like that. Now, I'm not saying that if you have MS, you definitely have candida, but they're showing that there's a correlation. At the same time, they've shown that acetaldehyde, what it does is it actually attaches to a lot of different vitamin receptors in the body. And what it can do is actually cause B6 or other B vitamin and other vitamin deficiencies. So this is what we call a functional um, deficiency. So you can actually eat all the vitamin B6 you want if your lab shows you're vitamin B6 deficient. But if you have candida and the acetaldehyde is actually attaching to all these receptor sites, the B6 that you're ingesting from your foods or the B12 or whatever, it's just going to float around your body because it can't attach to the receptor sites to actually you know, replenish the deficiency and then you just excrete it. So the first thing you do is figure out why you have the candida you know, deal with that, then get rid of the candida or control it, and then fix the deficiencies. So hopefully you've learned something. I know it's a lot of information. The bottom line is there's a lot of things that can happen from having a candida overgrowth. Now we need to have it, we need to control it, but the key is to figure out why and not always go, well, I have a deficiency, let me take this, because you actually could be doing nothing because you have this overgrowth. Or understanding why you feel a certain way after eating a meal. Understanding the health of you and the health of your vagina actually affects the health of your child and your child's GI system. So hopefully you've learned something. I know it's a lot of information. I was kind of all over the place, but I'll check you later.